So right now I'm uh, filming with a new 24 millimeter one, uh, f1.4. Correct. This is the new G Master uh, right here on the Sony A7 Mark III. So hi, so who are you? So my name is Ben Pilling. I'm the technical marketing manager for digital imaging at Sony Europe. Uh, so uh, there was a, we are here at Fotokina, which is most important. Uh, it's a very busy uh, trade show right here for Sony, right? Uh, and uh, you had a press conference where you're talking about some of the technologies? Yeah, yeah, so like I say, we have the most advanced full frame system, mirrorless system on the market and we actually are developing even more technologies. So already along with our full frame E-mounts where you've got the Alpha 7 series and the Alpha 9 where we have things like 20 frames per second with full auto focus and auto exposure with the Alpha 9 with amazing tracking blackout free viewfinder thanks to the Exmor RS sensor which is the only silent shooting on the market without distortion and many other features innovative like that the Alpha 7 R Mark III, 10 frames per second, uh, silent all mechanical shutter for, with 14-bit RAW, great autofocus as well, inherited some of the algorithms from the Alpha 9, and also the spread like to the Alpha 7 Mark III. We're making sure that we also bring that innovation into the future. So in terms of things like autofocus, people are really appreciative of our eye autofocus. Nothing like it on the market with being able to shoot full frame stills and being able to track the eye. So making sure you're not focusing here, you're not focusing on the ear, that it's actually getting an eye in focus really easily and simply. And I that... The focus is only for photos, right? That is only for photos, yes. With no uh, chance to have it for video? Uh, we'll have to see. I'll have to see what our engineers say about that. Uh, but that's currently um, on photos. But one thing we are developing, which we have had some demand for as well, is being able to focus on the eyes of animals. Um, so that might sound a little bit uh, different to some people, but actually for some wildlife photographers and so on, actually it might yeah. be really useful. And you see that okay, you can't this, this, is some, this, yeah. this is something which is in development. So um, like I said, this is something you're likely to see in the future coming from Sony. So not are we just, like I say, just trying to get focus right in general on full frame mirrorless. We're nailing it bang on when you look at the lights of the Alpha 9, being able to measure the autofocus 60 times per second, unlike any other camera on the market. But the innovative eye autofocus, actually having that so it's able not only to work on humans, but also to animals, is something that just shows how far ahead we are within the game. And that's complemented also by a great lens lineup, native full frame E-mount lens lineup. We currently um, have 30 full frame E-mount lenses with the addition of our latest 24 millimeter G Master um, and 48 E-mount lenses in total. We've also announced that in the near future, we will be expanding that to 60 lenses. So it's giving great options to our customers across the range and having native lenses, whether it's APS-C or full frame, is really crucial. So that means that the focusing system within those, whether it's autofocus motors, the elements and so on, are designed for that focus for mirrorless stills with hybrid phase detection and contrast detection, or also focus uh, for uh, videos with mirrorless as well, being able to move the lens elements appropriately for autofocus of video. Absolutely crucial, it shows somewhere that Sony is really leading the game. IAF is kind of awesome and people love it, right? It's really a, a game changer for a lot of people. So it's kind of strange that some people are not familiar with it, but basically, when you hold down a button on the camera, it, it can be assignable. So a, a lot of our lenses have focus hold buttons on the side. They can be customized. Uh, they can be customized onto that button. Basically, while you hold down that button, the camera will focus on the eye of a subject. And if you think about the high resolution sensors that we're using these days, you can zoom in massively on an image and you can tell if the camera is focused here instead of here. And like I said, there's a lot of people who don't know about uh, this capability, but it means that it just makes everybody's life easier. So whether that's somebody who's in the studio who's shooting high resolution stills, or whether it's a sports photographer who's at the tennis and he's wanting to make sure that they focus on the eye of the tennis player rather than the arm throwing up or the racket and it just makes their life easier. We've seen that across the board, that many different photographers are really appreciating this feature and how it's so advanced being able to track the eye across the frame. It also means if you as a photographer move the camera, that you're gonna be able to count on it updating the focus, even if you move the camera a bit further away or not. Eye autofocus is something we've actually been developing um, for quite a long time, so it's become more and more advanced. In our recent cameras, um, it's able to deal with things like people wearing glasses, people wearing sunglasses, perhaps a veil over the face of a bride. So again, a lot of our wedding photographers really love the eye autofocus. We even have 
face registration in our cameras, so you can find that if you're at a wedding. That works uh, great, where you can... You can actually register a face, so you take a picture. Your priority faces, yeah, right? so you actually take a picture of somebody's face, one, and you can actually set, I think it's up to eight faces, change the order of priority. So if you're at a wedding, uh, of course, the bride, number one, but probably the groom, number two, and so on, you can actually pre-register those so that it prioritizes that face to focus on. If you're using iAutofocus, you can either let the camera look within the whole frame, or if you set a focus point, like center point or flexible spot, you can actually just guide it, like I say, you can leave it on center point, hold down the button you customize while it's over the face of that person, and then as long as you're holding it down, it will keep focus on that eye. And like I say, it really is a game changer for some people, and we see that across different types of photography. So like I say, whether it is studio portrait, or it's actually sports shooters or street shooters, and it's making a difference to people. And this shows where Sony's been with our development of technologies, and again, we're a leader in sensor development. Um, like I say, we have uh, the highest market share of sensors in the camera, and we develop De developing innovative sensors for the cameras of today, but also for the cameras of tomorrow. And here at the show basically you announced that now you're the best cat camera in the world. <laughs> and it's a very big deal for YouTube. Uh, the Half of YouTube, I think, is cats videos, right? Well, we try. <laughs> we we try and cater for all users, but actually there's some uh, wildlife users who, uh, who've who actually requested, I've, I have had this request myself from some wildlife shooters, there might be foxes or things like this, and they just say, you know, I want to focus on the eye of the fox. Can you do eye auto focus for foxes? Uh, I'm not sure foxes is guaranteed in any announcements or anything, but that's an example of what I've personally been asked for. And you see that, like I say, not only for humans, but wildlife photography, you want to get that focus perfect. And with the development we have within our cameras, you can see how innovative we are. On the other hand, if you want to make YouTube videos of cats and you want to nail that focus the on the eye of your cat, cat, video, then, cat you, then you've got it. And, uh, can you do eye auto focus on insects? No. <laughs> okay, but, we'll have to okay. see. So, uh, my, my, my guess might be no, but I'm this, not, we'll have to see how far we yeah, go with this. This is AI. Yeah, exactly. And it's like AI, I say, right? you see from Sony, yeah. we have a wealth of um, experience within our different divisions. So. We're not just uh, a camera company, we're, we're not just a TV company, a phone company. We've got a whole plethora of different engineers working in different areas, and it gives us great capability to be very innovative with our cameras. And this is just one example where you've got AI working together with our cameras to help develop great quality on that. There. There's certain technologies like our nano AR coating, which is the coating on the front of a lot of our high-end lenses, stop coating and flare. Actually, that technology developed from some of our CD technology. So it shows you the departments working together. CD? Yeah, actually coatings on CDs. Um, actually the structure of that is where it originally uh, we learned from and developed from. And it just shows you the great working together there is between departments and engineers to help us be innovative in the market. Uh, so just over here, can we look? Uh, so there's, um, this is kind of the stuff that goes into a lens. Yeah, so what you've got here, this is uh, the structure of the 400mm f2.8 G Master. Now, within this lens, um, you have a, a complex structure, but what you'll notice, if you look at the left-hand side, there's quite a large gap between the front element and the second element. And what our engineers were uh, very keen on, uh, on developing was making sure we get not just a high-quality lens, which has G Master quality of resolution and bokeh, as well as quick focusing and so on, but actually that it works for the users. 400mm 2.8, probably not your cat YouTubers, but probably more your sports photographers. And in this case, we found that a lot of the 400mm 2.8s on the market were not only very heavy, but they were also very front-weighted. So with those, with those lenses, generally you have to be using a monopod, you have the weight towards the front of the lens, and it's weighing you down. Here, we design it so the weight is in the middle of the lens, so it's much more comfortable to hold. So there's lots of things which go into the, the thinking of the development of a lens. Here you've got not just the quality of the glass, the resolution, the bokeh, here you've got the weight distribution. We also carefully consider the type of autofocus motor which goes into these lenses as well to give you high quality, quick focusing. So before when we did the video about the 24 millimeter, is this the, 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 the engine you were talking about that does the fast autofocus? So this here actually is a different type um, of uh, focusing motors than what we have within the 24 millimeter. The reason why is that we design, each lens is different and it has different capabilities depending on the elements that go into it, the structure of it and so on. So actually um, we had uh, this is the XD, which is Extreme Dynamic Linear Motor. This was designed um, 
purely for the 400mm 2.8. It might be uh, using other lenses in the future, I'm not sure, but this actually didn't exist within our lineup. And it's a linear mode, so that's something which is great for mirrorless cameras, for smooth, silent focusing, for stills or for videos. And it's the special thing about the XD linear motor is it's extremely powerful. So 400 mm 2.8, of course, there are some large elements within that. And this motor here was developed exactly for uh, the 400 mm 2.8. Within the 24 mm lens, you have a direct drive SSM, which is a slightly different type of motor. It still achieves us great and quick focusing, but that technology is just one example. The technology actually originated from our in-body stabilization system. Uh, for direct drive uh, uh, supersonic wave motor is what, is what it stands for. And this was a, all about moving quickly and accurately. Uh, and actually the technology we have in our in-body stabilization, where you have to move an image sensor very quickly and very accurately, that's actually developed um, to helping us develop our motors for our lenses. So again, you can see information sharing and great innovation uh, working along within our engineers, but at the same time, it's all about choosing the right autofocus motor for the right lens. Um, uh, right here, let's jump in there. Sorry, uh, is this the amazing technology that's in the A9? So yeah, so what you've got here is the full frame Exmor RS sensor. We call it RS, uh, the industry would refer to it as stack sensor. What this means is normally on an image sensor, the first layer has pixels to collect the light, and at the top and the bottom of the sensor, you get circuitry to send the information off. However, there's only a small amount of space on a conventional sensor to send information off. What you get with Exmor RS, so again, you saw this originally on our RX100 series, on RX100 Mark IV, 5 and 6, and also the RX10 Mark II, 3 and 4, and also some other Xperia phones as well, a stack sensor rather than having the circuitry on the same layer as the pixels, has a second layer underneath. And this means that we can have much bigger area for our circuitry, so a lot more circuitry. What that results in is a lot more information being able to be taken from the pixels and sent off the camera. We even built a memory into the image sensor to help deal with all this information. That sounds a bit technical, but the end result is, with the Alpha 9, we can do 20 frames per second with full autofocus and full auto exposure. Not only that, it checks the focus 60, 60, 60 times per second. So you shoot at 20 frames per second, it checks the focus three times between each shot. We have um, also our anti-distortion shutter. So what that means is, you might be familiar with mirrorless cameras shooting silently, but the only slight issue is that image sensors, CMOS sensors read out line by line at a time. This means if you get a very quickly moving subject, say like a golf swing coming through the shot, you might get some distortion because it's reading line by line and if the golf club is moving through the shot, then you might get some distortion on there as it records line by line. The Alpha 9 with the Exmo RS sensor, because of this special structure with the circuits put underneath and the data moving off extremely quickly, it means that it reads out so quickly that there's no distortion um, on the image. And this is the only camera on the market in mirrorless that can do this. You can also get this with our RX series as well, which is mightily impressive. So it means silent shooting at sports event, like golf, was never possible in the past. You've always seen that golfer who turns around, he shouts at the photographer because he hears a click. With the likes of the Alpha 9, no distortion, silent shooting, 20 frames per second, full, full auto exposure, full um, auto focus. On top of that, even, like I say, what this sensor also helps us do is have blackout free shooting in the viewfinder. So we find this very strange because we're used to maybe SLRs where the mirror is going up and down and we get a blackout in the viewfinder. Some mirrorless cameras show a slight delay of the image as you're doing burst shooting as it refreshes up into the viewfinder. Because of the quick uh, readout of this image sensor, we're able to get continuous image of the subject even while you're taking a picture. So we actually have to put something up in the viewfinder to show you you're taking a picture because you always see the subject. We find that actually a bit strange because we're used to interference, but this is how it should be, that you should be able to see your subject even while you're taking a shot. And all that unique technology is because of our innovative sensor manufacturing. This with the XMO RS sensor, which is completely unique on the Alpha 9. So I guess the sports shooters are quite excited right now. And uh, I, I guess it's a secret if it's, you're not gonna say, tell me how many you sell, but I guess it's quite popular. And it's, uh, I, I guess you might be able to see a change it used to just be kind of an icon all this market, right? Um, yeah, so you've never seen before, um, particularly mirrorless, coming into professional sports. But actually, we're seeing it more and more that sports shooters are 
actually not only seeing but actually believing the technology because they go out there, they use it, and you see that across a, a different range. There's also additional benefits, so using the electronic viewfinder, some people are using SLRs, and not used to actually seeing the image, how it will come before they take the picture. So actually getting it right before you take the shot, again, only, uh, only possible with mirrorless cameras. And you see that Sony in those markets, like sports, is starting to make more of a headway. But again, even the Alpha 9, which sounds okay, it does 20 frames per second, it has that amazing autofocus and these other features, which are also great for other shooters. So again, you find a lot of wedding photographers uh, are also using the Alpha 9 because you can shoot completely silently, with no distortion, uh, with full frame quality, with amazing autofocus, with eye autofocus as well. And you see that we share these technologies amongst our cameras where we can. So the Alpha 7 R Mark III and the Alpha, Alpha 7 Mark III, which have come out, have the same autofocus algorithms in as the Alpha 9 as we try and make sure that we give options to the customer based upon their needs. And uh, uh, how about the stabilization of these cameras? The uh, full frame sensor is quite big. Does that mean you can stabilize as well as the smaller sensors? So now we actually offer um, sometimes up to five stops of image stabilization within our full frame cameras. So again, we uh, inherited full frame uh, image stabilization from Minolta, from Konica Minolta. Uh, and again, it's something where when we actually um, took over the SLR division of Konica Minolta, we didn't just say thank you very much and be very arrogant we took a lot of those guys on board. So there's a lot of people from Minolta who are still working within the company today in many different areas. And that technology and history that they had, we're very proud of uh, and something that we work with today. So in-body stabilization, which can be amazing, not only for stills photographers, so every single shot you're taking is stabilized, but also for video guys, just makes the difference. And when you look at our Alpha 7 Mark II series, Alpha 7 Mark III series, Alpha 9, all in body stabilization, every shot can be stabilized. But you don't do the, the lens plus body uh, stabilization, it's only the body? So if, it, if you are using a lens which has image stabilization built into it, and then it does some stabilization in the lens and other stabilization in the body. Um, our cameras offer five axis image stabilization. So that basically means pitch and yaw, which is your typical telephoto shooting, potentially where you're uh, shaking like this or like this. Um, those are like, say, uh, are two axes. Uh, there's X and Y, which are horizontal and vertical axes. You see that a lot in uh, macro photography, so you see the shape coming up in there. There's also roll shake, which is um, rotation around the central axis. That's very common in long exposure photography or also in movie shooting. Um, and we're able to um, stabilize, stabilize those either with the sensor or a combination of the lens and the sensor. So if you have a lens with image stabilization built into it, it will correct pitch and yaw in the lens and X, Y and roll within the body. If you don't have a, a lens with stabilization uh, built into it, then it will do all five within the body. So perhaps in the past, is it okay to say that uh, Sony might have had some uh, overheating issues, but those are like not existing anymore? So it depends on what, uh, what environment you're in. If you go into a cauldron, it's going to be hot. Um, but of course, we try and minimize um, any issues as much as possible. There are options with a lot of our cameras Especially for to be video, able right? to, yeah, for, yeah, there are options within our cameras to be able to increase the level of overheating warnings and so on. Um, but any, like I say, market feedback on this we appreciate and we try to take on board. All right. So, uh, and uh, just, uh, Fotokina is very busy because everybody is trying to compete with Sony right now. Isn't that true? Like, well, uh, like Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Leica, everybody's coming in the full frame mirrorless. It's very interesting and it's, 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 it's a sign though. I think we've been doing some really good stuff. The fact that um, other manufacturers are coming into the full frame game, it's real verification that Sony's done pretty well here. And, and I think some of the, the facts show that. But on top of that, you've got to say that we, we are in a very good position. So we have an established full frame system. You've got that still available in the market, the Alpha 7 Mark I. So you've got the Alpha 7 Mark I, 7 Mark II, 7 Mark III, R Mark II, R Mark III, S, S Mark II, Alpha 9. And that's a, like an range like nobody else has offering different options to different users. On top of that, we developed our autofocus technologies um, for many years now. So things like the eye autofocus has developed, but also phase detection built in. That burst shooting, not only with the Alpha 9 with 20 frames per second, you look at an Alpha 7 R Mark III, Alpha 7 Mark III with 10 frames per second, 14-bit with full auto-focus auto and full auto-exposure, 
with mechanical or with silent shooting. And nobody's offering anything like that on the market. But as, a, as another key point as well though, it's lenses. You need to have mirrorless uh, lenses to be able to match your body for the type of autofocus that you need for mirrorless cameras, whether that's for still images, for hybrid, uh, phase detection and auto, uh, phase detection and contrast detection, autofocus, or also that hybrid autofocus for movies. And now with the range of 30 full frame E-mount lenses, we give great options to the customer. And uh, uh, you're gonna give me the exclusive about the A7S Mark III, so how soon? Okay, I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but uh, uh, so there's that, and there's a rumored A7000, and uh, okay, so you don't have to say anything. Unfortunately, we can't comment on rumors, but um, it's good to know that there's interest uh, in Sony in the market. But you can confirm there's coming new cameras in the future, right? I don't think we're stopping <laughs> making cameras. Uh, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be quite surprised. And uh, don't you get people asking about the flip-out display on the side? Um, so ask for that? Sometimes um, we get um, different feedback. So some people like a flip-out screen, um, but also a lot of people we find also like to be able to shoot on the optical axis. So what I mean is being able to shoot in line with the lens, because when you flip out a screen to the side, uh -huh. you're composing away from the optical axis. And being able to have uh, the screen in line with that um, is a traditional form, form of shooting and means you're always in line. But like I say, if people um, want that feature, let us know. Uh, trust me, we'll let Tokyo know, and, uh, and like I say, it's, it's all good feedback. I think there's an Alpha 99 or something like that that has uh, both, that does the flip out and, uh, you know, yeah, we have a, cool. we have a, a three-way screen, which is a bit different to anything else on the market. On the Alpha 99 Mark II, on the Alpha 77 Mark II. Is it expensive, uh, or why is it not in every well, camera? Well, uh, like I say, it's also something which we consider in the design of the camera in terms of size and weight and everything like that. And if that's something which is requested, like I say, we'll we'll listen to the feedback of the market. And people would like to have 4K 60, right? Uh, again, let us yeah. let us know if that's what you want, and then, like I say, that is something which we'll take into consideration. Thanks. And uh, just one last thing, uh, consideration thing is uh, the H two six five. I think it'd be nice if there was an option to have a lower bitrate, so you can upload to YouTube without you know people that don't want to edit. It's another thing, you know. Noted. Okay. Sure. Noted. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot.